Get ready to enter the vortex. The anal retentive housewife starring Today's episode, The Tax Van. And welcome to another episode of The Anal Retentive Housewife. Today's episode is of a timely nature about preparing your tax returns, which almost every person has to do, and most of the people who think that they don't have to probably should do it anyway. Now, the first thing about preparing your taxes is, of course, to be prepared. Um, that means being prepared with your paperwork, because I'm going to assume that most people are probably having somebody else prepare their return for them. So, let's see, in order of importance, you need to have all your W-2s together, um, any 1099s, W-2s are wage statements, by the way, 1099s for interest, dividend income, uh, stock transactions, um, if you are a contractor or an employer, um, and you are self-employed but uh, a consultant at a company, for example. Um, so those are most of your income type forms. Um, those come in the mail um, around the end of January. The companies are required to send them by January 31st. So you should have them by the first week in February. Okay. Um, however, in the meantime, what can you do to prepare in January for your taxes? Well, if you're, you know, average Joe, then you probably take all the standard deductions and blah, blah, blah. You're single, so you only have one exemption. Your return is going to be pretty simple. Um, if you itemize, you're going to want to have all your paperwork together. And I mean all of it. The last thing I like to see as a tax professional, this is my new title, tax professional, um, is somebody who has like this massive paperwork and they haven't even opened their envelopes that they have received, or if they've opened them, then they've opened them wrong, because you know how those like trifold envelopes are like, tear in perforation, tear at perforation, tear again. It's too confusing. In any case, you should have opened it, taken a look at it, so you don't have a total heart attack when I let you know what the final numbers are. But if you itemize, or if you choose to, you need to have a couple of additional forms. And it seems like people always forget these, don't know why, don't know what the uh, problem is. Uh, most of the people who forget these things are the ones who, you know, have the same type of tax return every year, you know, but they just forget to bring in the paperwork. So, the things that people have forgotten recently that I've noticed. Uh, vehicle license registration fee, minus the rebate that you received. Um, that's considered personal property and the tax on that is considered a deduction. Uh, home mortgage interest, points, real estate taxes, um, medical expenses, but medical expenses are subject to a percentage limitation. I'm not going to get into all the details of that. I just want to try to help you to organize all your stuff. Um, mileage to and from the doctor, volunteer mileage, uh, Keep track of these things. It doesn't hurt to keep track of them and kind of help you, uh, you know, remember what you did in a particular year. Um, donations. Please, please figure out the uh, what you donated and how much the value is before you come to me. Because otherwise, I'd figure it out for you. It takes, you know, extra time. And so extra time for me is extra time for you. Because I don't know how to type. And so I do this when I enter numbers just to be careful. And so, you know, that's how you want to spend your Sunday afternoon. Fine with me. And, you know, if I look tired and frazzled, it's because I am. It's, uh, you know, lots of idiots out there. 
lots of Sunday drivers, um, especially on Sundays. Um, although in California, there's Sunday drivers every day of the week. Uh, what else? Um, if you and your spouse um, do not get along very well, then can you please just one of you guys come over, um, not the other one too, because then I get all distressed and then I get a headache and then I'm not going to be nice to the clients. Okay, um, let's see. Oh yeah, people bring kids a lot. I don't know why. Um, the last thing you want to try to do is bring kids. So, you know, spring for the babysitter or, you know, whatever. I don't know what the deal is. Um, crying babies, little kids who run around, who are like crawling under the desk, looking into my purse. I don't need that. So, uh, okay. Um, people have a problem providing their email address. I don't know why. Like, you get a lot of junk mail. Why not something useful from, you know, somebody who's a tax professional uh, that might be worth your while? Uh, let's see. Do some reading on your own before you come in so you can ask some intelligent questions. So you have some discussion points, you know, uh, because it'll help you in the future. Um, let's see. Don't bring in little pieces of paper like, you know, that are this tiny that say, oh, I donated $5 to the United Way or something. Could you bring it on an 8.5 by 11 paper? You know, just tape it on there, staple it on there or something. Uh, but put it on something that's better than just, you know, some little paper that is going to get crumpled up and lost. Okay. Um, that being said, my preferred methodology is to use sheet protectors. This is a sheet protector. Actually, these are several sheet protectors. You can buy them at an office supply store. Um, it's the milliliter and plastic type is PV119G. It's the non-glare yet heavy duty. And then what I do for each and every one, of, or what I should be doing, I haven't done it yet, uh, for all my forms, is I put them in this. This little pocket deal is also good for planning for next year because we're already three months into the new year. So any receipts you get, um, you know, put them in here and say, business expense, business lunch, travel, uh, office supply expenses, um, medical expense, entertainment, uh, you know, account information, all those things. If you have a home office, be prepared with the paperwork. Bring me a phone, copy of a phone bill, uh, you know, what's your monthly base charge, what's your DSL line charge. Um, bring all that information up front, you know, I don't want to have to be doing basic math, you know, while we're sitting down together. I can do it, but you know, it's just more uh, time effective for you if you've already done it for me. Although, please do bring the original documentation so I can see the source of the numbers, because I'm not just going to put something in there that isn't true. I mean, you can't just pull a number you know, out of you know where, and then expect me to enter it with and feel confident that I'm entering in the right information. I ask where these things are coming from. Okay. Um, if you don't understand things that come from your investment accounts, most of them have like a little summary of some sort, little investment paper that tells you uh, how to figure things out and eventually if you read enough of these you'll figure out what they are and what they mean. Um, if you're trying to do a return yourself, because uh, a lot of people in this area are uh, do-it-yourself types, then um, it'll tell you what each box means in each form that you receive from your broker or from your employer or whatever. Um, let me show you an example of how I have organized my parents' paperwork. Um, they're extremely annoying to have as clients, by the way. So um, I told them if they're going to annoy me again, I'm just going to refuse to see them and they'll have to go back to um, their accountant, who is, in my opinion, very good. Because um, my first interview with my parents, they're like, well, Eric did it this way and Eric did it that way and Eric asked us questions about this and that. 
and then Eric put in the numbers right away. Um, yeah, and I, then I'm like, well, Eric also charged you $600, and Eric didn't seem to know what he's doing, because you paid a lot of money last year, didn't you? So, you know, if you really want to, you can go back and see Eric. That's fine with me, because, hey, I don't need the headache with my parents, you know, talking to those, the two of them in a room together. Ugh, unbelievable. Anyway, got the paperwork together. So, what I did is I got a red rope file. This is a file pocket. It expands, see, Ooh, accordion expansion. And I color coded it. So I got, for them, I decided to go with a slightly different methodology. The uh, shoe protectors work fine for somebody like me who organizes her taxes in a binder system. Uh, but these people, they're not binder people. They're uh, file cabinet people, maybe box people. So, green means tax year 2001, tax season 2002. And these are all the little notes that my father wrote. Um, and he made some little notes to himself of stuff he wanted to bring to me to look at or to remind himself to take, or to bring along. So anything that's in his nasty handwriting, I put in one envelope. Then, actually for these people, I mailed them. <laughs> I'm a little distracted. I just saw Sammy exit the litter box. <laughs> okay, um, I made them a little information form, and in fact I downloaded this thing from the web that said, you know, tax preparation notes. Um, bring, you know, or do you have these things? This is sort of a Q&A, jog your memory type of thing. And um, I sent it to them in the mail, but I addressed it to my mother. So therefore my father doesn't look at it because it's addressed to her. And it's like, so then this time I made a copy of more notes, but one copy for her and one for him and one for me so I know what I gave to them and when. Um, but they didn't know about uh, the fact that their Section 529 account for their granddaughter, you know, was possibly a deduction. Um, you know, then they didn't have their list of co-payments for their doctor stuff. Um, since my dad was ill, they've got a lot of doctor stuff. Uh, they, they didn't know that either. Day. Okay. Uh, then they didn't know how much they paid for their phone and internet. <sighs> then they didn't know how much their cell phone was. Then, uh, what else didn't they know? They didn't know what office supplies they bought, because my dad is self-employed. Uh, let's see. Anyway, so, you know, basically your typical idiot. But what I do is I keep a copy of all my notes for every client, and then I keep it in their file for, their, for them. Okay, then... I made a copy of each account of theirs, and they have so many. Um, each account's information sheet, remember I was telling you, if you read enough of these from your stockbroker, you'll figure out what's happening. So um, it helps me because sometimes the terminology or the phrasing used by one broker helps me understand better and differently than what I see from another broker. So this is a guide to a form 1099 because all these people will give you a combined 1099 statement. They won't separate it out per, you know, interest or dividend or original issue discount or any of that stuff. They put it all in one and it's not, uh, not user friendly always, shall we say. Um, Okay, and then I always ask people, is there an investment interest expense? No. Well, there might be, but uh, people don't seem to know that. Okay. So I've collected all those in one location, so I can look at these if I need to and refer to them. It also helps me for future years uh, to you know, understand as I get new and additional clients what to do with their returns. 
Okay, this is a copy of the 2000 return for them, which uh, you should always bring your previous year's return with you um, because it helps the tax preparer or professional in this case um, know what your tax history is like. Um, also, some people uh, don't notice that their daughter's name is misspelled on a form. Uh, very important things. Um, my mother received a middle initial from Eric, their CPA, and she doesn't have a middle initial. Mm, stuff that might have been helpful to know when she looked at it the first time. Okay, so by looking at their return, and I know this year's is going to be very different because they had a lot of life changes, um, it's not going to be quite the same. On the other hand, this gives me a good idea of uh, what their itemized deductions are, uh, what forms I should be looking into. Um, you know, they always do donations and they fill out a separate form. Um, you know, are they also uh, depreciating any property? This lovely chair, Herman Miller, Costco. I, um, I'm taking a Section 179 depreciation, which means I'm depreciating it all at once instead of doing the uh, amortization doodad stuff. That's kind of complicated. Um, also, I can have a good idea of what kind of forms they have, like, you know, they have miscellaneous income. Uh, you know, do they have an employment? Uh, where are their standard donations from or to? Uh, again, the basic account information. So I kept that separately. If you want somebody to look at a previous year's return, by the way, to possibly file an amendment, uh, there's a couple things you need to look at and think about. First of all, is it worth the amount of money you'll be paying to the preparer to have it looked at and reviewed? Um, is it worth the amount additional that you might be getting back? Because let's face it, most people aren't going to file an amendment unless they think they're going to get money back. Um, so think about that. But you also have three years to file an amended return. Um, that brings to mind another question, which is how long should you keep your paperwork for returns? And if you have like a home or something, you should keep it, I believe it's seven years, it might even be ten. Uh, you can be audited for up to the past three years returns, um, at least by the IRS Franchise Tax Board, I don't recall offhand. Um, but in any case, you want to think about that, is it worth the cost? Um, Second of all, if you're prepared the first time around and you knew everything and hopefully your preparer asked you enough questions too, then um, you shouldn't have to do that. Um, but you should keep your returns for as long as you can. Um, as long as you have space in your file cabinets. Um, if you run out of space in your file cabinets, buy some more file cabinets. Um, it's kind of fun to see where you were at 10 years ago or 15 or 20. Uh, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. This is all of 2000 and this is a thick return and this is not even half an inch of paper. So, you know. Okay. Then I went through all their consolidated 1099s, um, copied each one as needed and stapled them and separated them out by um, broker name. So, um, and also if I received a statement from them, I filed that along with the 1099. Um, these are not things you need to send into the government. These are for your records when um, you prepare a return. Okay, then they made photocopies of checks. They copied a bunch of checks and put it on one piece of paper. I am of the school of thought that there should be one thought, one idea, one concept on one paper. So I separated things out. Doctor check on one page, um, check to the IRS on another page, check to the Franchise Tax Board on another page. 
um, because these will come up at different points um, in the tax preparation. So, and I did not want to have them all together. This way I can separate it out, um, all the supporting documentation according to the form on which I use that documentation. Okay. Then I copied all the uh, W-2s, the miscellaneous incomes. Um, uh, let's see, tuition program, unemployment, so on and so forth. Um, and this do take notice of status and amount of immediate tax relief. Um, not everybody seems to recall getting this, but yes, you did, and the government knows who got what, and they have kept track of it. Um, if you don't understand it, bottom line deal is you got $600 in advance of your tax refund if you were getting a refund in April. Um, if you weren't getting a refund, then you're going to have to pay that $600 back. Um, in any case, it is what it is. Um, you have to report it. If you don't, they'll find you and they won't be happy. Um, and you got to use it for six months. So, hey, you know, it's not a bad thing to have gotten it in August. It's not a bad thing to get it now. Uh, it just, they kind of changed their mind as to how they wanted to handle this particular item. And nobody really knew till December that they were going to do this. Oh, this reminds me of another thing. Um, right after you fill out your name and address and social security number and stuff on top of your 1040, it says, do you want $3 of your already paid taxes to go to the presidential election fund? And everybody says, or a lot of people say, no, I don't want to pay any more money. Did I not just say, $3 of your already paid taxes. All that means is that the government has a matching grant program for people who are running for president. Um, and if you manage to raise a certain minimum dollar amount, then the government will match your dollar amount that you raise. Now, this is for people who, um, for candidates who probably aren't like the the party favorite, or maybe they're from like the Peace and Freedom Party or something. Um, I like to say it's for the Paul Sanguses of the world, who, you know, they're not going to make it to the, you know, November elections. But in the meantime, give them a chance, and this is what the $3 is for. Um, I understand if you're not a citizen, you may not want to have $3 of your taxes go to that fund because you don't vote. Fine. Um, in any case, the choice is always yours, but that is what that money is. It's not you're not getting charged anymore for saying yes or no either way and it's totally up to you but that's what that is for can't understand why so many people don't understand that okay um let's see yeah uh, i prefer to get photocopies of your real estate taxes or you know your mortgage interest statement that you get from the bank um some people write on a piece of paper and i have no way of knowing if that information is accurate or not Obviously, I have to go by what the um, uh, what the individual said, and yet I feel more comfortable seeing the actual physical form uh, from the entity that issued it officially. Okay, here's a good example of how I like to see my paperwork. <coughs> Excuse me. Instead of having some nasty little piece of yellow paper from Goodwill, like rolled up and like jumbled and stuff unfurl the paper and staple it to a larger paper. This will allow you on the side to say date that you um, you made the donation, date that you bought the property, uh, how much you bought the property for or how you acquired the property, and then uh, what the fair market value is and how much of a, a how much you're claiming for that particular item. Uh, do do Yes. So, you can, you can do that all the side. Wow, amazing. And this saves me a lot of time. 
So, that's an example. And if you donate money to your church every Sunday or Saturday or Friday or whatever, um, write that down too. You know, that will help, again, the preparer help you. Uh, the more information you can bring to the table, the better it is for everybody because then that means I can ask you more advanced questions, uh, like about the Section 529. Um, you know, I can ask questions about, you know, have you thought to save for your retirement? Do you have a living will or trust? Uh, are you aware of these tax implications of the trust? Um, and so on and so forth. And there are a lot of tax implications, and that's why people do a living, uh, living trust or a will. So, and then uh, since this is for information, these are the, uh, the things I copied from the broker statements. I put it in a blue folder so I don't uh, confuse it with their stuff, which is in the green folders for this year. So, okay, so we've covered how to organize yourself before you come to see me. Let's talk about people who want to do their own thing and prepare returns themselves, for themselves, by themselves, of themselves. There's a number of sources on the web that you can get and do. Um, obviously, the most, actually maybe not obviously, um, irs.gov. That's the IRS website. I'd probably wait a little while because it might get kind of busy right now. And then for California, it's Franchise Tax Board. FTB.ca.gov. Okay. Um, and you can download all the forms and all the publications um, and instructions for the forms on these two sites. That should be almost everything you need. And yet sometimes I have difficulties understanding the language of some of these texts. Um, so I try to go to other sources of information. Um, but that's because I'm a tax professional. Um, let's see. There is information from the IRS that you can get for free. Uh, the first is something called Publication 17, or Pub 17, as it's known in the industry. Um, and that has the basic information that one should read to prepare one's own return. I don't think it's a good idea to let TurboTax be your guide on preparing a return. Although it's a very good piece of software, um, excellent. I've used it in the past, um, and I continue to to vouch for its um, usefulness. You want to really have some more knowledge than just what they prompt you for in terms of the questions and answers. Um, so get Publication 17. Also, from the IRS website, you can get a CD for free. Ooh, read that free. Um, that's a small business resource CD for free. You can also pick that up at the IRS offices in San Jose. And that's at 55 South Market Street. They're open from 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. They're really kind of busy right now, but you can still go in there and pick up a CD for free. Just ask the receptionist who's in the center. Um, and they'll even let you have two or three. And you can give them to your friends. Um, and that has a lot, a lot of forms and publications. And that's good for people who are contractors or have their own business. Or even if you don't and you're just a regular employee, um, it's good to know more about, you know, how your company went about preparing your wage statement. Um, okay, I believe we are very close to running out of time. So let me point out a few other pieces of information that you can obtain. Um, the first in relation to the small business CD um, is taxes, uh, sorry, classes that are provided by the IRS in combination with the um, Employment Development Department, or EDD, um, and they're, they're held throughout the year, they're free, and they're about four hours about employment taxes, S corporations, C corporations, partnerships, sole proprietorships, and they really teach you a lot. And you can always sign up for those. And then the next thing is um, a lot of the information is available on the web. Um, if you do a search for the Section 529, you can find out a lot of information. You can do the same thing for a 401k, 
or a Roth IRA, um, or how to figure out the basis of your stock options, um, and what it means to have a capital gain or a loss, short term, long term. A lot of these definition things are, are out there and available. Also, try to get like a preparation kit from your tax professional so that you have a checklist of things to follow and to look for when you know you before you go to your professional. Here it is. Pub 17. Get it. It's free. Um, let's see. Here's one I gave to my parents, tax preparation checklist. And it just says, you know, employment and income data. I also gave them charts on deductions um, and the limits for 2001 and for 2002 so they can do some tax planning. Uh, but I don't think they're the type to do much planning. Okay. And I also got information about the Economic Growth and Tax Relief Reconciliation Act, or IGDRA, of 2001, as well as the Taxpayer Relief Act of 1997, which also had a lot of sweeping tax law changes in it that one should be aware of. And it's kind of fun to read them. Um, okay. You can also go to this website called quickfinders.com. That's quickfinders, that's an S at the end, dot com. And they have these lovely little handbooks uh, about for small businesses, for different states, if you live in more than one state, uh, for somebody who's self-employed. Um, they're really, really good. But you do have to pay for those if you're interested. Anyway, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Um, so I need to get back to my tax preparation, which I haven't started. And I'm sure you do, too. So... This is the Anal Retentive Housewife saying it's not just a show, it's a way of life. Thank you.